the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. This solemnity was instituted by Pope Urban IV in 1264, and before then it was celebrated only in the Diocese of Liege. Pope Urban was inspired to make a solemnity for the Universal Church after he heard about Sister Juliana, a Belgian nun who was inspired with great devotion for our Lord in the Eucharist. Sister Juliana's inspiration was quite important for those times. The people's faith was diminishing. The church's doctrine was challenged by many heresies. The Lord's real presence in the Blessed Sacrament was surrounded by much sacrilege and irreverence. And so in order to revive devotion to our Eucharistic Lord and to inspire reverence and honor for the Blessed Sacrament, Sister Juliana suggested to her bishop that this feast be celebrated and spread. This happened in the 13th century. But I think it can be applied to our current situation today. Our Eucharistic Lord is surrounded, even today, with much irreverence and dishonor. Faith in the Church's teaching about the Lord's real presence is often misunderstood, if not outright rejected. Whereas we are meant to live our lives inspired by this great mystery, our lives are often scandalous, to say the least, thus leading to more and more confusion about what it is that we believe in. When our Lord taught the crowds that he is the true bread come down from heaven, and that he, anyone who eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life, his teaching was rejected by many. And as we heard in the gospel, they asked, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And so they concluded, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? And many of them went away. And upon seeing them going away, Jesus did not run after them. He didn't say to them, no, wait, you have misunderstood what I said. This is not my real body. This is not my real blood. It is merely symbolic. That's not what Jesus said. He obviously meant what he was saying. He was giving his disciples his real flesh and blood to consume. He then turned to his disciples and asked them, do you also want to leave? And I think the same question applies to you and me today. The Lord is asking us today, do you accept my teaching or do you also want to leave? And what teaching is this? I will summarize it by three concepts. To remember, to give thanks, and to have communion. Whenever we celebrate the Holy Mass, firstly, we remember. On the day before Jesus was crucified, Jesus anticipated his sacrifice on the cross. He instituted the Eucharist. He gave his disciples his flesh and blood, the sacrifice he was to culminate on Calvary. And from that time onwards, the church has done what our Lord always asked, do this in remembrance of me. And so at every Mass, we too remember. Remembering does not only mean 
to recall to one's mind an event which has taken place already. No, to remember in the biblical Jewish understanding is not only to recall an event, but it is to make that same event present here and now. So when the Jews celebrated Passover, they not only recalled what happened to their ancestors, but that same event was reenacted, made present again in their lives whenever they remembered it. And the same applies to us. At every Mass, we not only recall the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary, but that event is made present on our altars. At every Mass, we stand, as it were, at the foot of Calvary. To remember Christ's sacrifice at Mass is to make that very same sacrifice present here and now. And so the same question applies. Do you and I believe this teaching? Or do we want to walk away as the people did in Jesus' day? Secondly, at every Mass, we give thanks. The word Eucharist is derived from a Greek word meaning thanksgiving. And so we remember with deep gratitude all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ through his life, his suffering, his death and resurrection. We also remember and give thanks for all our own personal experiences of God's love in our daily lives. It is a time to count our blessings and we give thanks not only for what happened a long time ago, but most especially for what continues to happen at every Mass, on every altar. Do we believe this teaching? Thirdly, the Eucharist is a banquet in which the Lord gives us his real flesh and his real blood for us to consume. Holy Communion. At the consecration, the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ. The outward appearances remain, but the essence is changed. And so our Lord comes to us in a manner that you and I are able to receive him. If he were to change the outward appearances into flesh and blood, how many of us would be able to partake of the Eucharist? What we consume in the living flesh and blood of our Lord is his real food, his real drink. And that's what's different about us and cannibalism. Cannibals eat dead flesh. We consume the living flesh of Christ, and in turn, his life is given to us, Holy Communion. And so Jesus comes to us under the appearance of, ble of bread and wine, but he is truly giving his flesh and blood to us. And the question is, do we believe this teaching? And often our actions reveal our faith in the Eucharist or the lack thereof. There's a story of a man who was caught in a thunderstorm and the only shelter he could find was in a Catholic church. And so he saw the church's door open and he rushed in and he sat at the back pew. And over the next few minutes, he watched as people came in to the church. Some of them sat looking around. Others sat with their friends, chatting. Others were busy on their cell phones. 
And then an old man came, genuflected, and he went up next to the tabernacle and knelt there in deep prayer. The man wondered what was going on. What was in that golden box in the front of the church? What did that red light symbolize? And so he waited for the man to walk out of the church, and he went after him and asked him, why was your conduct different from all the rest? And the man said to him, what you saw me doing was making reverence and honor and worship to my Lord Jesus Christ, whose true flesh is contained in the tabernacle. And the man saw the two different attitudes towards our Lord, as I've mentioned in the, in the beginning, profound reverence and also a lack of reverence for the Eucharist. And so we have to today challenge ourselves into asking, do we really believe in the Lord's real presence? And do our actions reveal our belief? Do we genuflect when we come into the church? Do our knees touch the ground or do we merely make an act of half -hearted, uh, a half-hearted gesture? Do we show reverence in the church or do we treat it as any other building, chatting to our friends, busy on our cell phones? Do we have full, conscious, and active participation at Mass? Or do our minds idle and wander off? Do we, do, do we go to confession before receiving communion? Do we receive communion reverently? Do we stay throughout the duration of Mass, or we leave immediately after receiving communion? not waiting for the final blessing and dismissal. And lastly, when we leave the church's premises, do we live according to what we have received? Do we in turn become Christ for other people? And can people tell a difference in our behavior, in our interactions with them, that what we have received at Mass is Christ's true bread and true blood. May Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, be praised, loved, and adored at every moment, even until the end of time.